Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. And we're so happy that you've joined us today online. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each Sabbath for a new program where we get to sing different songs, we learn about God in a different way. And today we have something very fun, an activity, very fun activity that we're going to play with you guys. And I'm going to invite mom and dad to get ready. Or if you are watching with grandma or grandpa or aunts and uncles, whoever is an adult with you, call them up. Get them ready because we are going to need their assistance to play a little something today in our theme of the day. Now, uh, last week we asked you guys to write letters to us. And we were going to read those letters on the air. And I'm happy that three kids, with the assistance of mom and dad, wrote to us. And I'm going to read those notes to you guys now. So, Will is watching us right now. And uh, he sent us a note. Mom sent us a note for Will. And here's what it says. Our family is all home together. And Will has been building, playing with Legos doing crafts and playing outside in the backyard, as well as helping out his baby sister, Mia. I don't know if you guys remember seeing Mia here at church. So tiny, she's probably grown a little bit now, and he's helping Mia at home. That's so great, Will. Will really misses seeing all the teachers and friends at church. We enjoy watching all the programs online, and it brings a big smile to his face when Miss Teresa say his name as she welcome all the kids. We pray that everyone stays healthy and that we will see each other again soon. Thank you, Will's family, for all the love and thank you for writing us a note. We miss you and we hope that all this goes away soon and we can worship God here at home. Will, thank you for the lovely note. All right, our next note comes from far away. Do you guys remember Francisco and Frederico? Yes? Well, guess where they are? They are in Mexico. However, they tune in and they watch our program every Sabbath. And they ask mom to, we want to go to Sabbath, Sabbath school. And here is what mom wrote. Our family is so appreciative of Kids Connection team. Every week, the boys, that is Francisco and Frederico, they ask, can we go to Sabbath school? That's so cool. And I bet that they're watching right now. Francisco, Frederico, I hope that God is keeping you safe in Mexico where you are along with your family. We can't wait to see you guys back here. Thank you, Mom, for writing this, uh, this note. And we appreciate all the love that you shared with us. Now, our third note comes from JR and Seth. And here is what Seth wrote with the help of mom. We miss going to church every Sabbath and hanging out with all the other kids. We haven't been able to go to daycare, but our parents are working really hard to keep us busy even though they're both working from home. Last week, I, this is Seth, I turned two years old. Happy birthday, Seth! Seth turned two, congratulations! Whoa, this is amazing. We can't wait to see you again so we can give you a nice hug and wish you a happy birthday. So he continues by saying, I turned two years old and we even camped in our backyard in a big red tent, red tent. It was so much fun. Every night we pray that everyone who is sick feels better and that God takes care of everyone. See you guys soon, JR and Seth. JR and Seth, we miss you guys too. Thank you so much for writing us the note. We, we love you and we want to see you guys very soon here at Kids Connection. Now, if you want to send us a note and if you want us to read your note to your friends or to, our teacher, to your teachers or to us here at Kids Connection or to KID. Speaking of KID, I want to share something about KID happening later today. Go ahead, send us an email. The email is it's VD kidsconnection at gmail.com vd stands for vallejo drive so it's vd kidsconnection at gmail.com 
Send us an email. I need your names and I need that new little note. We will read your note uh, on the air on the next program. And thank you so much for the three, uh, for Will, for Francisco and Frederico from Mexico and from JR and Seth who wrote us this little note. Now, later I'm going to share something about what's happening with Kid today, 7, this afternoon, and how you can get involved and you can tell us what is going to happen next Sabbath, okay? So it's coming up. But for now, I'm going to invite you guys to welcome to Kids Connection by standing up and singing our song of the day. You know why? Because I want you guys not to worry. Don't worry about a thing. Whoa, that was a fun song. Remember when we sang that song here at Kids Connection? And we also sang that song right here in this room doing our VBS not long ago. Wasn't that great? I hope you guys enjoy singing the song of the day. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. Thank you for another Kids Connection that is on the way. We ask that you bless us. Bless each kid that are watching this program at home right now, whatever they are. Be with them and help us learn a little bit about, about you and connect with you a little bit more today. Thank you for being our God, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, let's go ahead and listen to our missionary story. 
Last week, we talked about a boy that really enjoyed soccer. Do you remember that? I hope you do, because today we're going to talk about some youth and what they are doing to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, here at Kids Connection, we have fun together. We have all the kids that come in and we play together. We play the games together. We sing songs together and we are sharing the love of Jesus. In other places of the world, we have some missionaries that they're also doing the same thing. However, they're doing it in a different way. Let's watch what the youth, missionaries youth, are doing in other places of the world and where our offering is going to help them continue to share the love of Jesus. Let's watch our missionary story. In the 1880s, Ellen White visited Oslo, Norway and preached at the Bethel Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, Oslo is one of Europe's most expensive cities, although it ranks high on quality of life. It's the center of the Norwegian economy and government. The Betel Church still operates at a prime location in the heart of the city. On Sabbath, you'll find a melting pot of cultures forming Sabbath school classes and then coming together for the main service. In this church, youth are a high priority. In 2017, a portion of your 13 Sabbath offering started a renovation project for a space specifically for youth outreach. The youth group in Oslo is very active and inclusive. Today, Alex and Marielle are asking church members to spread the word about upcoming events to any young person they know. There are universities scattered throughout Oslo, with many students hoping to make new friends. This group happily welcomes newcomers into the close-knit community. Events are scheduled throughout the week for the youth to connect with each other outside of church, too. I love the cabin trips that we have, <laughs> going skiing and hanging out together, because then you get to have like a lot of uh, like deep conversations together, too, with friends that you normally don't get the possibility to uh, in normal settings. I'm a very social being. I need people. <laughs> and. Uh, just a bunch of great guys and girls, good people to hang around with. On this Sabbath, they've planned a picnic in the park after church where they can socialize and get to know each other. For me, I don't always think about it as much as uh, it bring, you know, the youth group, more as uh, it's my friends, we want to go uh, hang out and then we can just like make, sort of make an arrangement and get together. Each Sabbath afternoon, the youth group from the Bethel Church joins young Adventists and their friends from all over Oslo for conversation, testimonies, and music. This gives them another opportunity to recharge spiritually and socially. Although this larger community benefits from spending time together, there are many in Oslo who don't know Jesus. The challenges of working in such a large urban area can be discouraging. Norway is a very secular country, so uh, of course it makes it more difficult for mission workers telling people about the gospel because everyone has sort of heard about it and they have in, in a way made their own opinion about it, so it makes it very difficult to show them how good it really is. The young people in Oslo ask Adventists around the world to join them in prayer. We need prayer for trying to have the best kind of environment for people to get more involved with God and each other. So pray for some spiritual guidance, help us to be more or better at meeting people and uh, show others that we are Christians. Please pray for this group in Norway and thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering that is helping this group reach more young people. Whoa, that was a great story. And it's incredible how they are sharing Jesus' love and God's love with those people. And they are connecting. Did you see that? How they are connecting with outside activities and they're doing things and events 
just like we did here at Kids Connection, they are connecting with people who they can share the love of Jesus. And our offering is going to help them to continue to uh, share the love of Jesus and love of God with other people. Thank you for your offering. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and click on the link above and where you, mom and dad can donate to the missionaries for today's offering. Thank you. Now, today I want to share something very, very fun with you. I'm going to invite my daughter, Lanessa, to come out here today. Lanessa, uh, always, every now and then, she helps me with explaining a few things. So, uh, Lanessa, come on up here. And we're going to ask you boys and girls, hello. Now, earlier today, I asked that mom and dad or an adult or whoever is with you at home, be ready because we want to, we want your help so we can explain and, and help the kids understand something. Now, before we get to that, let me just um, show you guys something. Um, Lanessa, can you do me a favor? Here. Can you turn around this way? And I think it's right here. Yes. So now, Lanessa, I'm going to ask you to cross your arms in front of your, of your chest. Yes, like that. Thank you. Now, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? Don't bend your knees. Don't bend your knees. I'm going to ask you to fall back, and I'm going to catch you on a count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that was scary, wasn't it? Yes, yes! <laughs> that was scary. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it on this side now. Ready? Here we go. Here's Lanessa. Here I am. Lanessa, I am very, very far away from you. Now, go ahead and close your eyes. Eyes closed and fall back. Whoa! <laughs> that was scary again. Whoa, that was scary. However, was that fun? Uh, kind of fun, maybe a little bit scary. Right, it was a little bit scary. Yes, and, and but however, she fell back with her eyes closed. And why did you fall back with your eyes closed? She fell back with her eyes closed because she trusts me. Now, I'm going to ask you to ask mom, dad, uncle, or aunt, grandma, or grandpa, or whoever you are watching this with at home. Ask them to do the same thing. I'm going to show you one more time, okay? Here it is. Lanessa is right here, okay? I'm going to take one step back, one step back. Now, I'm going to ask her to fall. Mom and dad... Are you guys helping the kids at home? Yes? Okay. So I'm going to give you a little more time for you to get ready. And we're going to do this together. I'm going to do it here. And you guys are going to do it at home. Ready? I'm going to get ready right behind Lanessa. Lanessa, close your eyes. Kids, close your eyes at home. On a count of three, we're all going to fall back. Mom and dad and someone is going to catch you. Don't have your sister or your brother or any little one catch you behind. Make sure that it's an adult to play this game, okay? Make sure that it's an adult. So, Renessa, parents, everyone ready at home? Here we count. Here we go. On a count of three. One, two, three, fall. Whoa! Again. I hope that you guys got to fall at home and someone to you. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? All right. So, you guys get to do it again. Okay? You get to do it again. And I'm going to thank Renessa for joining us, for uh, helping us demonstrate. Now, why did you fall back? Why did Lanessa fall back? Do you know who was behind you? Huh? Do you know that, did you know that this person was actually going to catch you? Lanessa, did you know that I was going to catch you? But yet you fell back because Lanessa trust, trust me. And her trust made, helped her close her eyes, cross her arms, and fall back. And because of that trust, I was able to catch her and not let her down because she knew and she knows that her father 
I will not do something to hurt her and I will always protect her. Lanessa, I want you to bring our new family member here uh, from you right now. I'm gonna show you guys something and I wanna explain why I'm showing this to you, okay? So Lanessa is gonna bring someone here to me and I'm gonna show you guys, um, um, I'm gonna introduce you to someone if you haven't met her yet. Thank you. Hello, say hello to Rosie. Yes, Rosie is our very energetic puppy. She is three months old and she's a multi -poo. Look at, look at her. She's so cute. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Yes, 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 yes. She has a little, a little, a little uh, a tag, name tag here that says Rosie with our phone number in the back. Now, Rosie is three and a half months old. Excuse me. She's three months old. We have her for two weeks now. She's very energetic. She loves to play around the house. She loves chasing Lanessa. She loves chasing a ball and she loves pulling a little a little bone and 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 rustling with a with a rug where's that where's that the, the the rope that we just got her we just got her a new rope now because she loves to play with all the toys that we gave her let me show you thank you here it is look at look at this toy come on rosie look at the toy look at look at her look at her see that see, see that you see you see how she's trying to catch oh she got it ha 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 she she got her rope and this is one of the toys that she plays with now why am i showing you rosie here today well first of all i want you to see our little pup look at her oh isn't she cute she's so cute i know and she's looking at lanessa behind the camera here but i'm showing you rosie today because i want to explain you something Rosie doesn't know anything. She can't cook. She cannot clean the house. She can't go outside by herself because the doors are closed. She needs someone to care for her. No. With only two weeks, yes, Rosie, with only two weeks, we learn how to love this little puppy and she became a part of our family and what I want you guys to understand something that has to do with our lesson today is that Rosie she doesn't worry about anything Rosie doesn't worry that she can't she doesn't she can't go outside by herself she she doesn't care where her food is coming from. Rosie doesn't worry about anything at all. Do you know why? Because Rosie has us. She has me, she has Lanessa, she has Larissa, and she has mom to take care of her. And because of that, she doesn't have to worry about where her food is coming from, where the water is coming from, she doesn't have to worry that she needs to take a bath by herself. We give her a bath. We play with her. We take her for walks because we love Rosie. The same way that Lanessa felt back and I caught her and she didn't worry about that she was going to fall. The same way Rosie trusts us that we are going to take care of her. Right, Rosie? Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. Now, what does this have to do with our lesson today? Well, today in our classroom, we are going to learn how to trust someone. We're going to learn, we're going to hear a story about trusting God. And when we trust God and we put everything in His hands, we actually don't have to worry about anything. Just like our song of, of the day, don't worry about a thing. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you guys to join us again singing our song of the day, don't worry about a thing. While me and Rosie here are going to be singing right here at Kids Connection. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. Thank you for coming, Rosie. You're gonna follow my directions to plant a seed, okay?
Step number one, put the dirt on the ground. Now put the pot on top of it. Next, we need the seed in the pot. It wasn't in the pot. Let's put it in the pot. Okay, is it gonna grow? <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Okay, let's put the seed on the ground and the pot on top of it. Okay, how about that? <laughs> no? Okay, let's try let's try that. Okay, so you're gonna make a little yeah. hole in the dirt first. Okay, so after the hole, what's next? The seed. Okay, let's put it in the hole. And then we'll get. And then cover it with dirt. Cover it with dirt. Okay, let's try it. The dirt must cover the precious artifacts. Hey, can someone get me a watering can? Oh, watering can. Why? You water it. Okay, what will happen when you water it? It will grow into a strong tree. What kind of tree? Um, an oak tree. A tree. Yeah, an oak tree. <gasps> We're going to have an oak tree here. Okay, we need some sunshine too, right? Yep. I found this little oak tree in my yard. It was an acorn that grew by itself. And now it's going to grow into a big healthy tree. See the acorn still attached to the baby tree. This tree would not have grown if you had put the steps in the wrong order. Today's focus is about giving your money and things to God in order. Hey Cody, do you know what it means to tithe? What's that word? It means to give 10% of all of your money to God. So Dylan's going to show us by providing you a dollar. This is a one dollar coin. We didn't have a dollar bill. Okay, but what? how, can you show us the coin? How many cents, like pennies, makes up a one dollar bill? A hundred. A hundred, okay. It's kind of hard to count up to 100 with a whole bunch of pennies every time. So Cody, you're gonna use dimes to show us. You can hold that. Okay, so count out loud, please. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, now how many dimes are there? Aha, uh -huh, it's worth 10. What's 10? The tithe? Yes. Very good. So for every 100 cents or $1, we give one to God. Okay, so put one on one side and the others on the other side. Thank you, Dylan. Okay. So, who has more? You or God? God? On the table. Me. God. No, on the table. Take your hands off. Let's see. <coughs> Which is more, nine dimes or one? Nine. Nine. Yeah. So, God's only asking us to give 10%, which is one-tenth. Does God need our money? Huh? No. No. But why do we give it? Because it helps his church grow. Oh, yeah. Do you know that the more we give, the more we are blessed? Yes. Like Colgate. This man was very poor, but when he founded this company, he gave more and more money to God, and now is a huge company. Hi guys, I'm Teacher Kelly for kindergarten today. Thank you for joining me, Cody and Dylan. We're going to tell the story about Daniel. And when we're talking about giving of our money, it's not because God needs our money. It's because we're showing our dependence on God, that he's always going to provide for our needs. And we trust him to do that.
just like how Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego put God first. Looking in the book of Daniel, chapter 1. We find how the wicked Nebuchadnezzar fought God's people and won. He took important items from the house of God we know, and he made a joke by keeping them in his own idol's house, an all-time low. Sadly, it wasn't just God's things he took. He had his army bring back young men who were smart and had good looks. The king insisted they had to be handsome and wise indeed so they could work in his palace and succeed. They were taught the language of the king's land and made to be like the other Babylonians. The king told the boys they had to eat his food each day, even if it broke God's rules, they had to obey. The king wanted them so full they could grow strong and help him in the palace all day long. But Daniel determined to not go against what God had said. He decided to find another way instead. So he boldly went before the king's chief and asked him to please think about a change in his and his three friends' food and drink. But the chief could only imagine the trouble it would cause if they became weak because they broke the king's laws. Knowing that God would take care of these four, Daniel asked only for vegetables and water, no more. The chief said yes, but only 10 days to test and see if they could do it God's way. After the test, the chief went to check them out and found that the boys were stronger without a doubt. So the chief let the boys eat nothing but veggies and water while the other boys ate from the king's plate. The time had come before the king they were to go, Daniel and his three friends, this you can know. As they were questioned by the king, he noticed a very important thing. Their wisdom and understanding was ten times greater, the king said, than any of the others who they had schooled and fed. For God honored and gave them favor in that land, for giving him first place, even over the king's demand. So like Daniel, make God number one in your life, and let him lead. He will take care of you and your every need. You know, that reminds me about a story of Cody. When he was five years old, he immediately thought to pray for everything and just believed in everything with all of his heart, sometimes where I didn't even think to pray. And one example is after a bath, he always liked to slather himself with some coconut oil. So I had this bottle of coconut oil and I only used it one or two times and then the pump stopped working. And so Cody had asked about why he couldn't use coconut oil anymore. And I told him, I just can't get the pump to work. I've taken it apart, I've looked at it, I've tried to push it down with all of my might. And I said, it's just not working and it's really too messy to unscrew and just pour out all over the place. So the first thing Cody said was very like, obviously, did you pray about it? And well, no, I didn't even think it was important enough to pray about. So immediately Cody prays that the pump on the water, on um, the pump on this bottle will work. After we prayed, I was about to think that I should prepare Cody for maybe this prayer isn't gonna be answered and that's okay. Dylan walks into the room, he sees this bottle down on the ground and he just pushes pushes down on it and it worked it worked because God answered our prayer because Cody immediately sought God out without thinking of anything else see I had been trying to do everything myself and decided eh, it's broken I'm not gonna use it but Cody believed that God could do anything and he used Dylan to answer our prayer. If you don't already have a giving jar along with your piggy bank or however you save your money, I would recommend that now you start saving some containers. Like here's a peanut butter container, a nut container, and I would say you get about three, and then you're gonna have one for saving 
one for spending and another one for giving at least 10 percent but you can give as much as you want to some people give very generously other people find it hard to give but we have to give because of all the things god gives us which is way more than just 10 percent or one tenth God gives us our food each day. And you know, these times are pretty tough. If you guys are in need of anything, make sure you contact the church. Call the office, an email, or you could go to our Facebook page, Sabbath School Families at Vallejo Drive, or you could text any of the teachers if you have our numbers so that we can help in any way we can. And we can definitely pray for you. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with these children whom you love and have given to us to be lights for you in this world. And thank you for our many blessings, for you providing for our needs every day. Help us to learn how to prioritize you and make you our number one in all things, that we think about you first, we come to you first, and that we give to you first. And, and please be with all of those that are hurting during this coronavirus time. Um, that you can be with them and heal them and keep us safe. Please be with all of the families and thank you for the security we have in you, God, that you are never changing, you are always stable, unlike this earth that we don't know what's going to happen. But you have gone and prepared a place for us and you're going to come and take us home and help us to be ready. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a happy Sabbath, guys. Many blessings this week. Uh -huh.